We will begin the Pizza Party Snuggle Sack in just a moment. Hi everyone, it's Mikey and I'm proud to introduce a brand new pattern series by Yarnspirations.com. It's called the Sleep and Snuggle Sack series. On screen now are other sleep sacks that are available in free pattern and tutorial format. Whimsical and delightful projects that will practically guarantee a warm smile from boys and girls. Super terrific for gift giving and much more. If you're wanting to try another sleep sack, then just click to play and I'll forward you directly to the next one. If you're wanting to do today's project, well, don't wait any further. Let's get started right now. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today, let's begin a fabulous tutorial and let's kick it off with a party. A pizza party to be specific. Today, we're going to be doing the Pizza Party Snuggle Sack by Yarnspirations.com. Today's tutorial is a comprehensive start to finish project. In fact, I'm actually working on it behind the scenes in between the video takes in order to be able to show you what to do step by step. Of all the snuggle sacks, I have found this one to be the easiest. I was intimidated by the toppings only to realize how simple they were and I learned that there's a bottom crust and a cheesy topping. Yes, cheesy. I will be teaching the child size today. The adult size is similar but you'll have to substitute the information that is in the pattern in order to follow along. Just use the instructions and substitute what is said in making the adult size. The child size pizza minus the filming and preparation time took me approximately 13 hours to make. This is about a two day project and that's of course if you don't get distracted. On screen now is the anatomy of the pizza and we'll return back to my workshop chalkboard in between each major lesson. There are several steps in making this pizza and we really are going to go step by step and making it easy for you to follow. Without further ado, let's examine the pattern and let's start from there. So here's the pattern today and we are going to be looking at this in a lot more detail and what I want you to notice is that there is a bottom crust and then there's a top. So there's two panels that are sewn together on the outside. So the bottom crust is completely the sand color and it extends from here all the way to the end. Then the top is the cheese, the sauce and here this is extended along out and then folded over top to give the illusion of thick kind of stuffed crust. So it's actually really kind of a neat concept. So today's pattern both the top and the bottom are the same to about this level right here and then the pattern on the bottom changes and then the one on the top changes to what you see here. So both of them are identical but there's something else going on in this pattern. I don't know if you can see it. So if you look about here, you'll notice that it looks a little bit more different from here upward versus here downward. Here what we're doing is every other row is expanding into an increase. Then from about here to up here, it's every two rows of just regular crochet and then the next one is increased. So this gives it a slower gradual uh, growth as it gets from this point outward. The reason for that is that they want you to build out this area here to get this nice fine point and then to slow it down because if they continue on the same path here that this uh, wedge here will be much bigger and therefore be a kind of something you don't really need anything that big. So you're going to be noticing that in today's pattern. So what I'm going to tell you today is that you're going to do the top and the bottom both at the same time. So what I want you to do is that we're going to do the bottom crust from here to about this cheese line here and then you're going to do the top cheese then from here to here and then from that we're going to then do both the variations. So we're going to go back to the crust on the back bottom side and then we're going to do the top side. So uh, when I go to start you I'm going to start you out because both the patterns are the same up until about this mark here on the cheese. So here's a copy of the pattern and you just have to substitute the information for adult size. The adult size is given more of this mustard color and the child size is more in the fuchsia. So what you're seeing here is that every time there's an instruction where it's different for the adult versus the child, there's a difference of color of instruction. Today's pattern will be done in the child size just to, to show you and then you can substitute it if you would like to do the adult size. So it's a very simple pattern and I'm going to be showing you today as, as I think I've already explained to you that the bottom crust is only a certain amount. So the bottom crust is from here to about here and then we do something different and then the toppings that you see here is from here to here which is the same information and then we change it slightly. So I'm going to have you do your bottom crust up into the spot and I'm going to have you do your cheese up into the spot. So you have two different wedges and then we'll carry on in today's tutorial. So let me show you how to get started and I have a workshop sheet for you as well just in case you want that. 
So I have a workshop sheet for you and as I said in the beginning is that it gets progressive really quick. So what we have is that we have two rows that we have. We have a half double crochet row and the other one's an increase row. The increase row means that there's two half double crochets in the first stitch and in the last stitch and this is gonna give you a change of account. So it's gonna start, the pattern's gonna pick up from this point and it says that there's eight in this line. So you're just gonna do this line check, do this line check, you will be left with eight. Then you're gonna do that line again and then this line again and you'll be left with ten. And we do that until we get to twenty-two stitches all the way across. We then pick up and then we move to the bottom section here and now this time it changes. So there's gonna be two half double crochet rows in a row and then an increase and then that changes your count here to 24. So this time it's gonna slow down, it's not gonna grow as fast so because there's two half double crochet uh, rows in a row before you do the increase and you're gonna do that. So you check, 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 you got 24 stitches and then you do another half double crochet row, and another half double crochet row, another increase row and check. And so we want to get that all the way done until you get to the number of 48 here at the top. Okay, and then that's where the cheese is going to stop and that's where the bottom crust is gonna stop and then we're gonna pick up from this pattern from that particular point. So let me show you how to get started and then you can use the workshop sheets in order to help you in order to, you to get the right size. Okay so let's get this party started. Let's start with the bottom crust and my friends the cheesy topping is identical to the same stitch work. You just have to look to where you see the sauce on the top and then you'll realize that's where both the bottom crust and the top actually take a detour from each other. So I'll be showing you the bottom crust and giving you the instructions on what to do. I would recommend doing both the cheesy topping and the bottom crust at the same time and therefore you'll know exactly what to do and then meet me back at the top and then I will show you where they vary from that point forward. So let's begin to do the bottom crust and also the cheese top from here to here and when you're doing the cheese top use the yellow, when you're doing the bottom crust use the sand color and we're gonna do both of them at the same time because the fact is it's the same instruction. So I'm just gonna show it to you once with the crust and then you can just come back with that information then with the cheese with the yellow to, to redo another one so that you have two panels that are identical and then we're gonna pick up after that and we'll start with our sauce then and the crust for the top part and then just continue with the crust and the bottom part. So let's begin, we're using an eight millimeter size L crochet hook today and I'm starting with my crust with the sand color. So what we want to do is that in this pattern, chain two at the very beginning counts as a half double crochet so don't forget that. So let's start off with a slip knot. So let's begin, we're going to chain three. So remember the cheese is starting off the same way. So one, two, and three. So we want to go into the uh, two half double crochets in the third chain from the hook and then turn. So we're just gonna go to the third one, the very beginning and put in two half double crochets. So one and two. So now you have a total of three half double crochets in a row. Gonna turn your work and go for row number two. It says chain two and that's your, that counts as a half double crochet and it says two half double crochets in the next uh, half double crochet. So we're gonna put two into this one. So one and two and then it says one half double crochet in the next one which is the last one. So now you're at four stitches across. Just like that and that was row number two. Turn and work and go for row number three. We're gonna chain two, one and two and one half double crochet in each half double crochet to the end. So we just go to the next one. So just half double crochet so one and there's another one, next one and the next one. Okay, so there was no progressive growth. It just gives it a chance to grow up nicely. So that, so that was row number three. So row number four is really quite easy. So chain two, one and two. So it's a half double crochet right in the first one here and another one. So there's two right in the first and then you're gonna just half double crochet until you get to the very last one and you're gonna put two into the very last one. Okay, so the last one is like a turning chain and you're gonna put two half double crochets into that spot there. Okay, that was row number four. So now that we're finished row number four, I want to bring off my, my worksheet. So now what I need you to do is that I need you to go and do a repeat step just like you see here. 
So what we want to do is that we have a total of six stitches across. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then essentially what we want to do is we want to go into the next row which is one half double crochet in the next. Do that and then the next one is two into the beginning, two into the end which gives you a total of eight just like that. So what I want you to do is that I want you to check it off. So let's do that together. Let's just start you off just to make sure you're good. And let's just put this aside. And so we're gonna chain two. Okay, so the first one is just a one half double crochet in each. Okay, so one in each. So there's no growth on this one. And then once you go across you just check it off that list. Just like that. So there you go. Okay, and you should have a total of six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And then turn it chain up two, one and two. There's gonna be two into the first one. So one and two and then one into each all the way to the end except for the end. The last one is gonna have two into the same one. Just like that. So now that you're putting in an extra one at the, the front and the back or the, the, the beginning and the end then what happens is that you're gonna have an extra stitch. So you should have an extra two stitches as a result of this. So sh there should be a total of eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sorry, one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. There is your eight. So on the sheet, let's bring this back. So on the eight, we got this done. So one, we did one row, half double crochet, and then the next row was an increase. So we did two in the beginning, two in the end, which gives me my eight. So I want you to complete this worksheet all the way to the end so that you have 22 stitches across. So each one just half double crochet over uh, and then the next one is an increase. Half double crochet, increase and just check it off as you go. This worksheet is available on the crochetcrowd.com under this particular project if you would like to download it in order to check your list off. So do that now and I'll see you at the end of number 22. So just a few minutes ago I left you down over here and I said to do the, the workshop. So I just finished the last one here and now we're about to go to the next one down here on the sheet. So the next time instead of just doing one half double crochet row and the other one's an increase row we're now gonna slow down the progression and now it's gonna be two half double crochet rows in a row and then an increase row. And so you just check it off just like you've been here and this is gonna change your counts for the amount of stitches going across. So I want you now there's basically three uh, rows in each of the repeats here and I want you to get this done for the child size up into you get 48 stitches across. So it's gonna take you a little bit and I need you to do this with the cheese as well and when you're done this up to here start your cheese and get that done and then we'll meet back here then and we'll continue along in this pattern. So we'll then pick up from that point. So please continue with your crest. Get that done all the way to the end. Then do the same thing with your cheese and then we'll meet back here. So that's it for now and I'll see you in just a moment. So let's move on and off camera I've completed the rest of my bottom crest up until where I told you I was gonna do it and just for the record I've also done my cheese that I did over here. So they're both now done to the same spot. Now this is where the bottom crust takes a different turn than the top and so we're gonna do the bottom then first. So all that the bottom is is at this point is that we are going to place a stitch marker. So right when the last one that you just did. Okay so I've been following my sheet all the way and let me just uh, show you that sheet here um, that I was working on. So all I just did is that I marked it. So I went down and I did the check marks for all the bottom crusts and then I just went through my sheet like across don't forget and then when I came back and did my cheese I did actually an X just like that. So what I want to do now is that now that I'm at the right spot because I finished right until the very end is that I want to mark this particular last row with the stitch marker. So in the bottom crest we're gonna continue using the same color for another 13 inches from this spot right where I'm marking it with the stitch marker. So just mark it. You'll take that out afterward of course like this. So every row is now going to be the same. There's no more growth on it so you're gonna see that it's gonna stabilize off now and be more flat at this point. So every row going forward is just gonna be simply just a half double crochet. So let's pull everything nice and tight back in and all you're just gonna do is just half double crochet. Let me just quickly review. 
So for the next 13 inches from this particular marked spot now we're gonna chain two and then every stitch just gets one half double crochet all the way until you get to 13 inches high. So I'm gonna leave that for you to get your bottom uh, crust done and then this is it for the bottom crust so you can see it's not really a big deal. Uh, it is really quite easy and so then it's gonna be amazing. So please do this uh, to get your 13 inches done fast enough and then when we come back then I'll get you started on the cheese. So last time I left you we were down over here I did my 13 inches of just regular half double crochet going up and now the back of the crust. So the bottom part of the pizza is done for me and now I'm gonna move on to the top of the cheese area and of course remember up until this point here the cheese was exactly the same pattern. So it's from here upward that it changes even on the top. So let's go back to the picture and let me uh, show you where we are and what we're gonna do next. So here we are back on the pizza and the bottom crust is now completely done from tip all the way to here. So that's it. So now we're gonna go back to the cheese area and the cheese was the same from here to here as it was in the bottom crust and then we took a little bit of a different path. So right, right now the cheese is now done until this particular point for me and now I'm gonna take you through the sauce and then through the crust. Remember what I said in the very beginning that this crust is not just this width, it's actually double and then it's folded over and then re-sewn back in here to give this a thick topping uh, just as a look to finish it off really quite nicely. So let's move on to the next part and we're gonna go from the cheese which is already done and I'm gonna just take you to the next part of this tutorial. So as I promised my cheese is already done. It's the same as the bottom crust up until the same spot and this is where I finished off. So what we're gonna be doing here is that this color is now completely done on this one and this is where I'm going to finish this particular cheese color and then we're gonna move on to the sauce. So I'm just gonna trim my work here and we are going to join on the cranberry color which is the color of the sauce and I'm just gonna weave in the ends here and we're gonna move up and do a few rows of sauce and then we're gonna then switch back to the crust color then to complete. I have to say that this has been a lot easier than I've I realized it would be and uh, I left this for the last snuggle sack for filming because I thought it would be the hardest but it's actually one of the easiest. So who knows right? Never judge a photograph. So let's uh, get begin, let's just weave this off and let's begin our next color which will be the cranberry which will be the sauce. Now when looking at the sauce area we're gonna notice that it's doing almost a ripple effect and that's because it is. So we're gonna be creating this little bit of effect you know because cheese is never uh, always perfect on a pizza so it's got a bit of a ripple effect and then we're gonna really bring it back to a solid line here as we do the crust as well. So let's work our way across with the cranberry to create the wave effect that is happening. So let's just create a slip knot and put it onto the hook and let's go into our very first outside stitch here. You'll notice that there was two into the outside stitch just like so when you finished off the before. So just keep an eye on that and we're just going to join it with a slip stitch and begin. So we're going to chain two okay and we're gonna half double crochet into the same one. This is going to count as two half double crochets into the outside one and this makes sense in just a moment. So what's gonna happen is that the next one then available to you, leave this straggler down on top. The next three are just one half double crochet each. So one, two, and three. Now the next two are gonna be together. Okay, so there you got this one. So they're half double crochets two together. So wrap and pull through, leave it on the hook, wrap the hook again, going into the very next one, pull through. You end up with five loops on the hook, wrap and pull through all five loops. You need to do that total times of twice, two times. So let's go to the next one and do it again. So wrap and into the next one, pull through, wrap, next one, pull through. There's your five loops, pull through all five. Just like that. So what's gonna happen in between, we're gonna have these two together. There will be three half double crochets by itself and then the next one is gonna be two into the same one to create the, the ripple effect. So what is this, ha what this is happening, it's causing an indentation under and then when we come to the next one it's gonna create the indenta uh, indentation over. So the next three are just half double crochets. So one, two, and three. So the next two are two half double crochets into the same one. So this creates the over and we're gonna do it again. So just remember that when you're doing this it's in groups of two on the bottom and the tops of the chevron look. You can see it's starting to 
kind of play with your eyes a little bit. So the next three are by themselves. So here's the repeat pattern. So next three are by themselves. Okay, and then the next two are together. Okay, and then the next two are together. So you have your group of two of those in a row. Okay, the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. And then the next two have each two double crochets or two half double crochets in each. So one and two. I want you to repeat that same idea going all the way across. So you're, al you're almost halfway across anyway. I guess I might as well stick with you. So let's keep going. So, so it's three half double crochets in a row. And the next two are together. So that was one and the next two are together. There's two. The next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. The next two have each two half double crochets in them. So one and two. Okay, the next one's the same thing. Two into the same one. So there's my group of two. Continuing along the next three are one half double crochet each. So one, two, and three. The next two are together. Okay, next two are together. There's your group of two again. Okay. Just I drop my stitch. Let me just pull it up. And now the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. Leaving you with one final stitch. And in the final stitch you're gonna put in two half double crochets. So now you've just established. You can almost see the ripples starting to happen. And it uh, looks really good. And let's move on to the next section. So let's turn our work. We gotta repeat the same row two more times. So let's start again. I'm not gonna take you all the way across like I did before. But because it, it's the exact same thing that you already know. So we're gonna chain up two. One and two. And the first one has another half double crochet in there. So there's your two into the same one. Okay, the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. Okay, the next two are together. So put the next two together. So one, okay, so there's one together and then do it again. Just like that. Okay, the next three are by themselves. So one, two, and three. This takes you to the middle one of the group of two. Do you see that? There's that's just this one here. That one's gonna have two into the same one. So I know that I'm on the right track. That middle one should always line up with each other. And then the other side is the other middle one. And there'll be a two into that one. So continue that same idea for this row and one more row on your own. So remember the next three are by themselves, two together, two together, three by themselves, two into the same, two into the same, then three by themselves and continue that. And you're gonna see the ripple effect is really gonna start to open up. So do this row and one more row and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So now I'm back and I have my row that I left you on plus the next row done. What I need you to do, this row here before it goes to the sauce, I need you to mark it with a stitch marker. I did a mine on the other side and we need to use this as a measure and gauge like we did with the bottom crust. So please mark that now. We're gonna move on to the next part of this and we're gonna continue the same color because now that we've created it wavy, we need to bring it back into being horizontal once again and nice and flat. Let's do so in the next round or the next row. So this is the final sauce. So what we need to do is that we need to bring this back to being horizontal. So in the very bottoms there are gonna be double crochets in the very tops so there will be singles. So in the tops of the singles for example you see that there was two in the top of the valley in each. Okay, so that means that these are gonna be single crochets. The three half double crochets that were already there are still gonna be half double crochets and the two right in the bottom where we did the together will be double crochets in order to get the width down. So if you can look at it from that perspective it makes it a lot easier to remember. So we're gonna start off on the very edge. We're gonna chain up one only and this is just one half side of a typical turning over 
like this. Okay, so those first two are gonna be each one single crochet. The next are three half double crochets by itself. Those are gonna stay as half double crochets for this one. So one, two, and three. So technically last time what we did in the bottoms that we did two together. So because they're further down we're gonna do those two as half double, or sorry as double crochets. So one and two in a row. Okay, so it's getting deeper. Now we're gonna come back up the other side. So there's gonna be three half double crochets in a row. So we're gonna match that with half double crochets again. So one, two, and three. And now we're on the top. See the four? So those are gonna be single crochets each. So one, two, three, and four. Do you see that? So now you can see that we're just stabilizing it really good. So let's just review one more time. So the next three are half double crochets as we make our way downward. So there's half double crochets each. The two at the bottom, okay, those are gonna be double crochets, one in each. Okay, now we're gonna head up the hill. These next three are gonna be one half double crochet each. Okay, the, th the four at the top of the hill now is gonna be one single crochet into each. Please do that all the way across now that you see the rhythm. So I'm coming up all the way to the other side and this is the last time I'll be using this particular color until we get to the pepperoni later on in this tutorial. Okay, so the very final two is just going to be one single crochet into each like so. So that's it. So let's finish off this color and let's bring back our sand color which is the color of the bread and we're gonna use that color then to uh, start the crust itself and I had you mark where it's marked down here. So it's gonna be 20 inches from here all the way until uh, we finish up doing the crust and then we're gonna carry on from that point. So let's uh, turn our work and let's get doing the crust once again. So now I'm gonna start with the crust. So we're gonna begin doing the crust. It's exactly what you already know. It, again the hard stuff is really over and so right from this point right here all the way up until but until 20 inches that is when you're going to stop doing the crust. So you're just going to join on your crust, chain up two and then just like it was before it's just one half double crochet into each going all the way across and back and across the back and that's all you gotta do. So it's really quite simple um, this whole concept when you really think about it when you break it down step by step. So I want you to go back and forth for a total of how many times it takes in order to do 20 inches from this spot here. So measure from this spot up and keep on going until you get 20 inches and then meet me back here where I will have this done. So I'm gonna go sit outside and enjoy some nice weather and continue to crochet and when I come back I'll have my 20 inches uh, completely done and I'll show you what to do next. I'll see you in a little bit. So now we're completely done and I have my 20 inches all the way from my marker up here all the way to the beginning right here. So I've just fastened off my yarn at this point and I just trimmed it and what I'm gonna do in the future which I'm gonna do during the assembly process is that I'm gonna take this edge and I'm gonna fold it over okay and I'm going to sew it along the top edge of where the sauce is. So this gives it a raised edge look when you're actually wearing it. It's actually kind of a neat concept and all I'm just gonna do is gonna sew along here and then when I go to do the assembly as well I'm going to also sew along the side edges like so in order to bring that to a conclusion as well. So this is what I'm going to be doing at this process. So we're gonna move on now to the pepperoni next then onto the mushroom and then we're gonna show you the final assembly. Okay now let's move on to the toppings. Let's do the pepperoni next. So let's move along and do the pepperoni. This is what it looks like here. There's only six of them on the pizza for the child size. So these will go really really quick. There are only two rounds involved in making these. What you wanna do when you're done one of your pepperonis, you leave a long edge and you're gonna, or a long uh, tail strand and you're gonna use that to then sew it to the top of the cheese area and you gotta strategically place it. So let me show you how to make a pepperoni. To make a pepperoni all we just need to do is just create a slip knot using the same size hook and we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Coming into the very starting chain right where my thumb and uh, middle finger are pinching we're going to place in 11 double crochets right into that same stitch and that's gonna cause it to go all the way around. So one, 
So two, three, this is four, that's five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So with that chain that you skipped over when you did the beginning there should be a total of twelve of these posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Join it to the top and that is round number one. So let's move on to round number two. It's a repetitive pattern all the way. So we're gonna chain up one. In the first stitch there's going to be two single crochets into the same stitch. Next stitch there's only gonna be one. So the next one there's gonna be two. So one and two and then the next one just one. You're gonna repeat that same idea going all the way around. So the next one has two and the next one has one. Continue to do that all the way around and that will be the conclusion on how to do pepperoni. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm continuing the pattern as normal. The final stitch if you're keeping count should be one single crochet. Then you know you're right and you know it's pepperoni. There's nothing else going to attach to this so even if you're wrong it doesn't really matter um, as long as it looks like it's round just like that. So all I'm just gonna do then I'll leave an extra long strand. That'll be your sewing in strand onto the top of the pizza and what you want to do is slip stitch into the next one and pull through and through and that'll make it a nice round one for you there. So you need to make a total of six of these all together for your pizza and I'll see you back here. We're gonna start the mushroom next. Okay let's add another topping and we're gonna move on to the mushrooms. They're quick and fun so let's go make some mushrooms. So let's start the mushrooms. This is what they look like up close and you need a total of six of these for the child size. Again extra long strand so that you can sew it down to the top of your cheesy pizza. So let's begin to work on doing a mushroom. So let's begin. The mushrooms are relatively easy. I thought I thought it was gonna be a lot harder than it was but it's not. So using the same size hook you're going to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five. In the fourth chain back so just count it back. So one, two, three, and four. So don't go all the way back. Just go to the fourth and you're going to treble. So wrap that hook twice into the and go into the fourth chain from the hook and treble. You wanna treble a total of eight times. So let's start counting those out. So I've already done, this is gonna be my second one. So it's number two. This first one does not count as one at this time and just continue to treble. So this would be three. This is four. This is five. This is six. This is seven. See it's making a, a semicircle and this will be number eight. Just like that. So what you have here you should have nine posts so include that first chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. I need you to chain four now. So one, two, three, and four and into the same one that you were doing everything I want you to slip stitch. So you've almost done the head of the mushroom, the top of the mushroom but we're not quite, we still have a little bit more to do on this side but we're not ready to be there yet. So we're gonna chain five. So one, two, three, four, five. Third chain back you're going to do a half double crochet. So one, two, and three. You're just gonna half double crochet into that third one back. The next two chains that are left is gonna be all one single crochet each. So one and then do the next one like so. Now making sure that this is looking at the same side. Okay so this is the wrong side. This is the right side. You can see how it's kind of buckling up towards you. You're going to slip stitch into the middle of where you had that other one when you did the slip stitch. And now we're just gonna finish this side of the mushroom. So we're gonna chain one first. So using this outside chain the first two are gonna be one single crochet each. 
and then the final chain is going to be two half double crochets. So one and two and I want you to slip stitch it to the top of this next one right here and that's it. That's the mushroom like so. So now I want you to pull some extra strand of yarn that will be your sewing strand and I want you to yarn over pull this through that loop and that will be your sewing strand all ready to go and just trim off any loose ends that you would have had right in the very beginning and it'll be right in the center. That's where that is. So just trim that out and now you have to do a total of six of those and then you're going to be ready for the final assembly after that. Now it's time to start the assembly. I'm going to take care of the cheesy top portion first and taking care of rolling my crust and then attaching my toppings. Then I will be single crocheting the bottom crust and the cheesy top and together with using the same colors that match on the top side. It's really quite fun and watch how it's done. So we're now ready to begin doing the process of putting things together. So the first thing I want to do is that I want to work on one section than the other. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to work on the top first. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to fold over the section right here and here. Okay and I'm going to fold that over. So I'm not going to sew anything there yet. So what I want to do is that I want to sew across the top here and this will create a, create a raised lip. I then on the same piece I want to position my toppings and I want to sew those into position. Now this particular uh, snuggle sack is unlike most of the other ones that we've done. Actually I haven't done anything like this. So what's going to happen is that you're going to single crochet yourself across equally along the sides. So whenever it changes to cranberry you change your yarn out to cranberry. When it changes to cheese you're going to do that. So you're going to put both of your bottom crust and your top crust together and you're going to uh, single crochet it together like sewing it but it's using single crochet instead it would go a lot faster for you. So you're going to go along the edge, change it to cranberry, along the cheese, back up, change to cranberry and then finish it off with the crust. That's what we're going to do and I'm going to show you a fast forward version of what we're, what I'm going to do in order to put everything together. So hopefully that will help you. So let's begin. My friends at Yarnspirations.com and myself Mikey of the Crochet Crowd we would love to thank you so much for joining us in the making of a pizza party snuggle sack. It's been a pleasure to teach you today and if you're looking for more free patterns and tutorial ideas you can count on us to keep the inspiration flowing and the ideas free. Have an amazing day and we'll hope to see you back here real soon. Bye bye.